how much regret did you have? Because again, this is something which most conscientious believers and even non-Muslims would have this, that I sucked as a son. I gave a hardship. I, I, I know ifs and buts are from shaitan. And we are told from the sunnah not to think of ifs and buts. So everything's qadr. But as sons, we always reflect upon how could we have been better? Um, and the difficulty, did you punish yourself over that as well? Of course, I felt like it was never enough. And I remember I had a kitchen plan coming for her because I'm good with my hands. So I like to do construction and so on and so forth. I already built her a porch, very big porch. Loved it. Allahumma barik. She even used to take pictures and she used to take pictures and send it to her friends and say, look, I'm very proud of what my son has done. And then um, I had the kitchen coming from her, for her on Thursday, but, and she was meant to return on Sunday. And then you just go to show that nothing was enough. My brothers always did stuff for her. And it's like six months before she passed away, Akhi, we did so many things with her. We took her every other week. We took her to restaurants. We took her to theme parks. It's like Allah was making it, like preparing us that, yo, she's coming back to me because for a mother to give birth to 14 kids, Akhi, Subhanallah. And she buried seven. And on top of that, wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threw at her, she was patient. And there was one ayah that she kept on repeating, no matter what. And the ayah was, إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ I only complain of my grief and my worries to Allah. I only complain my grief and my worries to Allah. No matter what her, her husband and her kids put her through, this was what she used to say. But there was one moment where I felt like, you know what, I need to step up as a son. Is when my mother was washing up one night and I snuck downstairs. I just wanted to see what my mom's doing, but she's washing up in the kitchen. And I could see it. She's got something playing in the background, always athkar, always athkar in the background, during cooking, during sitting down, during whatever it was, it was athkar. And it was a few words and the words were, and, and this goes a lot. It plays up a lot in my mind and the words were um, I'm ready to meet you. I'm ready to meet you. I'm ready to come back to you. And my mum's saying this to Allah. I'm ready. I can't take it anymore. And I kept re and I keep I haven't really broke this down and I'm like what does she mean by this? Like, is she, like she can't cope with what we put her through? Or is it the dunya that's been so heavy on her shoulders and the fact that her husband left her mm. my father left her and all of these things like what what was it that's telling you this because i can see your heart broken and the year before that her brother which was like the leader of our tribe with my cousins got killed so she was she's never smiled like that before again you know, after 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 their death and we tried so many things after the death of my uncle and my cousins we knew we needed to do things to distract her. But for her to say that, I think Allah said, you know what? You're ready to come back to me. And two weeks before she went to Umrah, she gave all the money away to her friends and said, if I don't come back, give this to my sons. It's like she knew, but we don't ever know when the angel of death is coming so for us, yeah? She knew, man. She knew. May Allah have mercy on her. Allahumma ameen. May Allah unite you all as a family in Jannat al Fardos. Allahumma ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all the mothers of the believers 